from ghosties and ghoulies and long-legged beasties and things that go bump in the night. We're here down at London's Forbidden Planet as John Landis is in town promoting his new book, Monsters in the Movies. The thing that I noticed when I was going through the book, that I really felt that you loved writing this book. Would, would I be right in saying that? I enjoyed it, yeah, but it, it was funny because I, when I, I wrote the chapters and I did the conversations with Guillermo del Toro and Christopher Lee and who else, Rick Baker. John Carpenter. John Carpenter, Sam Raimi, David Cronenberg, and John, I'm leaving someone out. <gasps> Ray Harryhausen. And I did these, and you know, I did all the work. And then I realized I had to write captions for every photo, and there's 1,400 of them, and that took a while. <laughs> Oh, you know. that's, that's good, because I, I was thinking, because the, the, the book is extremely visual and you've spent your life making stories from through pictures, I just wondered whether the illustrations were the, were the kind of heart, really. Well, that, well, it is a picture book. I mean, it's, it's filled with really good images from all of these different monsters. <laughs> that was the point. <laughs> and, and to me, was there a tribute to film and filmmakers in the book from your part? A trip? That's interesting. Well, I guess the whole thing's a tribute. Not all of it's complimentary, but um, in the back, there's a section on filmmakers who make monsters, makeup artists, and special effects people, and some directors. Yeah, yes. Yes, it's a tribute, Claire. That's what I meant to say. And, and what was it like? You, you've been interviewing yourself. I mean, obviously, you've interviewed before, but you're, you're speaking to your friends and your colleagues. Like, well, that's, what was I'm, that experience I'm very, like? Well, it was fine. I'm very proud of the conversations. I don't call them interviews because they are friends. I mean, everybody I've been friends with for 30 years. So that was fun because I, they couldn't get away with anything. You know, I could challenge them and say, what? You know, I'm very proud of Chris Lee's interview because I think it's the most extensive interview he's ever done about his, because uh, he's played almost every iconic monster there is. You know. And there's a lot of, um, the, there's, the book is filled with facts but it's also filled with a lot of humour as well. Laugh out loud humour, I found. Well, you're a very sick girl, Claire. I, you know, I don't know. I understand you, that was you giggling at the, the human centipede the other day. <laughs> well, you know, somebody had to. <laughs> somebody had to give it some credit. Was there, was there anything about the book that you've learned as you've gone through it that you've learned about the art of filmmaking yourself? That's a, not really. No, I didn't learn. I learned, what was interesting is I learned that everyone has a different idea what a monster is. I mean, they're really different ideas and different conceptions and different rules. I mean, like, you know, David, well, some people talked about how you shouldn't see, you shouldn't show it, it should be in the shadows and left the imagination. And Carpenter's saying, you know, I pay my 10 bucks, I want to see the monster, you know. <laughs> it, I mean, people are really different about it. And, and what do people fear? I mean, some people just fear bees or ants, you know, so what do the movies do? They make giant bees and gargantuan ants and, or snakes and people are just afraid of snakes. Or it, it's interesting what you consider a monster. Well, what do you consider a monster? Uh, well, the House of Commons right now. No, the, truthfully, in terms of mo what monsters are is their metaphors and their metaphors for many things Joe Dante suggests uh, in the book that you have a parlor game name the monster name the metaphor because he uses Godzilla who Japan is the only country that's ever had an atomic bomb dropped on it and you know several years later they make a movie about this gigantic prehistoric monster that's radioactive that lays waste to the city and kills them. I mean, it's pretty obvious what that analogy is so you try to figure it out. I mean, what, what do werewolves mean? What they, we had a huge vampire renaissance when the AIDS epidemic broke. And now it's zombies. I think zombies are the monster of the 21st century because they represent not only, you know, they represent chaos and the loss of order and collapse of society, which is all around us. And it, it, the monsters are what we fear. It's our way of dealing with what we fear. And, and uh, you, you've spoken in the book and you've said yourself that you're an atheist. So do, do, do these horror and, and ghost stories and, and stories about the devil, do they scare you? If the film is good, I mean, uh, The Exorcist, I, I use that as an example of a wonderfully made movie. Bill Friedkin, William Friedkin, was able to create what's called suspension of disbelief. 
So while I was in the cinema watching that film, I bought the whole thing. I was a good Catholic, and I was scared shitless, you know. But as soon as it was over, you know, I slept like a baby. But it's, that's the power of a film. And every film creates its own rules. And, you know, it's interesting because when people say, I don't like horror films or I don't like... You know what that means? To me, it's the same as saying, I don't like opera or I don't like theater. It just means they've never seen a good one. You know, I don't like ballet. Oh, yeah, I could take you to some ballets, and you find you do. Because when something's great, it's great. Well, it's like anything is personal, isn't it? It's, it's a personal preference. Well, subjective. Everything's yeah. subjective. But, and, you know, I just, they, I just saw, again, The Island of Lost Souls, which is a Paramount picture from 1933, Earl Kenton directed, starring Charles Lawton. And it's just as scary and creepy as it was in 1933. I mean, a terrific movie. It was just restored in the States by Criterion. Probably come out here next year. But it's a wonderful movie. The other one that you mentioned as well as being really scary, and I remember it personally being very scared, was The Uninvited. Well, it's a good picture, The Uninvited. Although, you know what's weird in that movie? Is Ray Milan and Ruth Hussey play brother and sister, speaking of which. And they buy a house together. And I'm thinking, what's that about? You know, and the... A very odd sort of thing. And, and just the, uh, sort of the research, really, that you, that you did, um, were there films that you, that you mentioned in the book that you hadn't seen? Yeah, there were a couple of Japanese films and, um, that I hadn't seen. I've seen 85% mm, of the films that are in the book. And how did you get hold of all the, 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 the illustrations? The photos? Yeah. Well, yeah. It's, I, my partner in the book is the Cobal Collection, which is the largest archive of Hollywood stills and just film stills in the world. Um, that's when I knew I could do it. And you painstakingly just went through them all? And what, and, and did they jump out at you? And then Well, you could, I see, it's called Monsters in the Movies. It's not about, it does, it's not called, you know, only good film. It's just about monsters. A lot of monsters are in there because I think they're silly, you know. Um, and also, again, you know, it's broken down into so many categories, but the s humans are the scary ones because the other ones don't exist. You know? But the, the chapter on human monsters, I was surprised how many iconic serial killer movies there are. You know? and, um, and can you tell us about the chapters as well? You've, you've obviously got quite a few chapters. Get the book out okay, and, and show right, us. Okay, all right, here you go. <laughs> see, tell you about the chapters. It's, so it's, what can people expect, really, when they see the book? It was difficult. Well, See, big pictures. It, 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 it was difficult because there are so many varieties and flavors of monsters. There you go. Which, the, which is really interesting. You wouldn't even think about that until you start looking at this book. The, where, the variety well, I would love that there to are. Know where, oh, here it is. Okay, contents. So there are chapters with, illustrated with vampires, and then that's broken down into Dracula and a bunch of, but anyway, vampires, um, werewolves. Mad scientist, and then under mad scientist, you have whole chapters on Dr. Frankenstein and the monster and Jekyll and Hyde, and then zombies, and then ghosts, mummies. This is a big one, sort of myths, legend, and fairy tales. So that encompasses a lot of Greek and Roman mythology, and the Brothers Grimm, and Mother Goose. You know, there are monsters all through literature um, dragons and dinosaurs, monstrous apes, nature's revenge, atomic mutation, the devil's work. Witches, killer dolls, the one that's really creepy, scary children, space monsters, monstrous machines, human monsters, Nazi monsters, scary older women. It goes on. And then there's thing on monster makers. Here, I'll show you something interesting. Where's Nazi monsters? I found there's this whole subgenre of all the monsters. It's so interesting that, whoops. Well, because, <clears throat> the book brings things to your attention that you wouldn't even consider being monsters, but they are really. Well, oh, sure, but this is my, th here, these are all monster Nazis. <laughs> because you think, you know, just being a Nazi isn't that monstrous enough? No, they have to be a, a Nazi zombie or werewolf or, the, this is one, one of Guillermo's pictures. This is a guy who's kept alive, he's clockwork from Hellboy. Anyway, um, it was very fun to do. And I think it's a very fun book to look at. And, and, and what, was your, what was your biggest achievement from doing it, John? Finishing. <laughs> because uh, I kept going, how many more pictures are there? I mean, there are about 600 pictures we didn't use. So we're going to do another edition. Um, luckily, it's doing well enough that DK told me that we're going to do another edition in about 13 months. 
because you know between now right now there are like 11 zombie movies in production Brad Pitt's making one you know and there's so many monsters it's unbelievable I mean I really didn't expect as many I mean I knew there were thousands but I didn't realize there were hundreds of thousands so remember, stick to the bookstore and pick up your copy of John Landis's Monsters in the Movies. I'm Claire Bueno and you're watching Premier Scene.